Hello, it's Jen from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to work on getting our robot to steer. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove the power cell. Press down this little tab, pull this off. Put that aside, pull the battery out. So we'll have to charge that up. Next, let's get to the servo lead. It's in the transceiver box. There are four screws that hold the cover on here. That's a pretty long screw. that into our little container so don't lose it. So the first cover comes off. See that? Take off the bottom cover. Okay, let's open it up and see what we have inside. So we have, let's trace this down. In the first slot here we have the servo, and this is from the ESC. It looks like the ESC connection brings power over from the ESC. So we're going to have to determine what that power actually is, what the voltage is. And this is a little O-ring here, the blue piece of rubber. So the servo is in the first slot. Remove that. Let's take that out. So let's look at the spacing on the connector, see if it matches what we have on our previous projects. Previous projects were 2.54 millimeters. So the spacing is 2.54 millimeters on our previous projects in between the pins. So we'll measure this. That looks like it is correct. What a stroke of luck. The next thing we need to do is figure out what voltage the servo runs at. So we're going to need a charged battery. Let's work on that next. Let's figure out how to charge our battery here. Let's see, it's a seven cell NIMH, nickel metal hydride. Let's see what its voltage is. Let's see, red goes in the red and black goes in the black. 8.45 volts. So this is an 8.4 volt battery, which means it can stand a little more charge in it. So let's do that. I will hook it up to the IMAX B6 AC V2 from Sky RC. Let's turn it on. Let's see, LiPo? Nope. NIMH battery. That's what I have. Let's try that. Start. Current. 2.0. So that should be good. This is a 3000 milliamp hour, so you can probably charge it safely at 3 amps, but we'll try 2 for our first time out. I've ordered 
the connector that actually mates with this with the, for the battery charger, but I don't have that today, so I'm just going to chance it with these alligator clips. Let's try this. Make sure they don't touch. Okay, start. And off it goes. So this should be done in a little while. So the battery took about 45 minutes to charge. Let's put it back into the chassis. Before we plug it into the SE, we should turn on the transmitter. So on it goes. Now we can plug it in. Put it on this little box so it doesn't get away. And I hit the on button. Okay. Red light. That's good. Ooh, speed. Got like that. Don't put your hand on the differential here. <laughs> So we have a little green light in the box. Let's open up the transmitter and see what voltages we have on the servo pins. 5.965. That must be six volts. So that's good. So we need six volts for the servo. We should be able to shut this baby down. Okay, let's hook the steering servo up to the Jetson. We have here a PCA 96H5. You may remember this board from previous hit videos such as PMW Servo Driver and IMU and PWM Servo Driver. It's hooked up to a Jetson TX1. This will also work off of a Jetson TK1 development kit. For the wiring, we have 3.3 volts coming from pin 1 to the positive rail. Ground is coming from pin 6. SDA is coming from pin 27. And SCL is coming from pin 28. And then they're wired into the board. So let's plug the servo in. Put it into the first slot here. We also have an external power supply to drive the servo. It's 6 volts. Plug that in, and now we're ready to start the Jetson up and load some software. Okay, let's load up our software. Let's try the standard example that we've been using in previous videos. We'll go to the Jetson Hacks repository on GitHub, find the repository JHPWM driver. Let's grab that address, git clone that address, switch over to the directory PM driver. Switch over to the example directory. Now we have to edit the servo example. To set the servo minimum and maximum. So I don't know what those are supposed to be yet, but we'll just 
take these and run them. See what happens. We'll make our little example. And we run sudo servo example. Oh, well, oh, that's fast. Okay, so it sounds like the limits are a little bit off. But it looks like we have control over it. Next step, we need to write some software to get it to work with Ross.